welcome back. So uh, this is video number four for the chapter 9-8 review. Uh, the first three videos covered uh, part one of the exam. And this video, I'm hoping we'll just cover part two. Um, again, the 9A test that covers sections 9-1 and 9-2 in your textbook is a 100-point exam. It only covers two sections, but it covers graphing, vocabulary, and um, that's about it. Yeah. And both forms of graphing, standard form and vertex form. So it's pretty cool. Um, make sure that you watch the first three videos. Um, part one can be retaken for a higher grade. This part cannot be retaken for a higher grade. Whatever grade you get the first time is your set grade. So cool beans, we need to really prepare for this part. So it says, study guide 9A, part two. Let's read the directions. So part two will have some kind of picture on the front where you get to make some conclusions. And it doesn't even matter what conclusions you give me. As long as they are valid, I will accept them. Okay, so let's read. The graph below shows the approximate height y. So this axis is height. Y of a cat, x seconds. That means this one's time. And if you need to write that, so x is time and y is height. Cool. All right, all right. So this is my y axis, the height. This is my x axis, time, tiempo, right? So, so this is the approximate height y of a cat x seconds after it jumps from a table to the floor. List and explain four conclusions you can presume from the given graph. What do you see? On the actual test, I'm gonna ask five things. Then it's gonna be about a frog, just FYI. <laughs> Pretty similar picture too. Not exact though, but it's similar. So there's a frog jumping, tell me five conclusions. Tell me anything you see, what do you see? This is not me trying to get you. This is me going, hey, very bright young person, tell me what this is telling you. And by the way, if I sit with 30 kids, 30 kids are gonna tell me 30 different conclusions. And they're not necessarily wrong. If it's a valid conclusion that you can see, cool, tell it to me, okay? So at the bottom, it, it lists, has some lines. Here it gives me four, because I've only asked you for four conclusions. So one, two, three, and four. On the test, I'll ask for five. That's the only difference. So we have height and time. And this one just happens to do with a cat. Again, test one's a frog. Is it a frog? Might be a grasshopper. A critter that jumps. Go with that. Okay, so we have this cat. I'm a cat lady. I have three cats, Frank, Floyd, and Lola and they jump from everything they possibly can, and the real fat one doesn't do a really great job because he slams into stuff and just skids down. And then he looks at me like he's embarrassed. Like, did you see that? And I'm like, yeah, that was embarrassing. Don't do that. Um, so this cat is on a table right here, and this cat jumps up and then lands. Hmm. I'm just gonna give some random thoughts that I have. You're like, when do you give random thoughts? Rude. Okay, so if this is where the cat started, the total jump took four seconds. That's one nice conclusion. Random, but that's doable. That's a nice conclusion. You can tell me this conclusion. This uh, has, you can tell me that this is a parabola. That's a good conclusion. You can tell me it's a quadratic, which means it formed a parabola. You can tell me that this shape has a maximum, which is true, right? Because it's a mountain. And you could even tell me where that maximum happens. One, two, three, four, five. The max happens at five. You could tell me it has a vertex at two seconds, the cat was at a maximum height of five. You could say something like the cat uh, was at his maximum height in two seconds, something like that, right? So two seconds, the cat was at its highest. You could um, share where 
the landing point was, which was four zero. The cat landed at four zero. You can't just say four zero. You have to tell me what it means. You could say the cat started at zero one. The start point was zero one. The table was located at point zero one. The landing point, the floor was at four zero. Um, you could tell me that this is a parabola that opens down, which would imply that the A value of the equation is negative. There are so many conclusions that you can give me. Pick four and put them on your study guide, okay? Now, the actual test again is five conclusions, and it's about a frog jumping from the ground more to the ground. So there's no table um, elevation. But good question, and it's you thinking it through. You can choose whatever you want. I don't care. Cool. Nice. Now let's flip this sucker over. This is the hard part. Go ahead and read the directions at the top. Now, I will be honest. If some person gave me this test in high school, I would have panicked. I really wasn't good at, like, true-false questions or sometimes always never. I would literally talk myself into the wrong answer the majority of the time, <laughs> which is frustrating. Trust me, I, I can still do that. Eh, it's a talent. You know, you're welcome. Um, so I know that these are hard. These are one point each. You're going to have 15 of these on your test. And the front side was that uh, frog question. That's going to be five points. So this is a 20-point part two. You can't retake part two. Again, you have a front side that you're going to have to come up with five conclusions, right? Not four, but five. So one point each. And then the back is one point each. So it says, for questions one through ten, please indicate whether each statement is always true. 100% of the time, that is a true statement, Mrs. Miller. Never true. That is never true. Or mm, could it sometimes be true? So what you're going to write on the line is either the word, blah, 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 word always, never, or sometimes. Going through it. Okay? And that's all you're going to write on this little line. And it's worth one point if you can get it right. Cool. Let's read the first one. The graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. That is always true. Quadratics are what we're studying. That is any of these beautiful things that have an x that happens to be squared. See the x is squared, x is squared. Anything with an x squared is a quadratic. When you graph a quadratic, it is a parabola 100% of the time. Cool. That is always true, baby. Now I'm going to give you 15 of these on the actual test. You're only seeing 10 on your study guide. The highest power of any variable term in a quadratic formula is a 1. That's not true. It's a 2. Never true. The graph of a quadratic function contains point three zero. Well, it could. Not always. But, I mean, I could literally create a shape where 3, 0, yeah. That one has three zero in it. Mm -hmm. Is it always going to have three zero in it? No. So this is a sometimes. Sometimes it could, but not always. The graph of a quadratic function has a maximum. Wait, sorry, let me read that one more time. The graph of a quadratic function that has a maximum opens upward. My brain just went, what? So I'm a visual girl, okay? I'm a visual human. Um, I need things to be in a visual manner for me. So I'm going to scooch this up. I'm going to draw a picture. The graph of a quadratic function that has a maximum opens up. Huh. Hmm. Let me draw a picture. Okay, there's a parabola that opens up. Is that a maximum? Is, is it? I shouldn't do that. I just gave myself a thousand chins. Does it have a maximum or is that a minimum? It is a minimum. Cool. So that's not true. That's never. The axis of symmetry goes to the vertex of a parabola. Always. If the A value of a given quadratic equation is negative, it opens upward. Hmm, let's check. 
So there's my A value. It's negative. Is that going to open up or is it going to open down? Yeah, that's an open down. So um, that's a never. The graph of a quadratic function has one zero. Well, what the heck's a zero? Let's see. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. A zero is where my parabola touches the x-axis. This one has two zeros because it touches this beautiful parabolic shape, touches this line called the x-axis two times. Here it touches once, and here it touches nance. It doesn't touch at all. So the maximum there could be is two, the minimum there could be is zero, and it could have a one. So the graph of a quadratic function has one zero. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, cool. The vertex of a parabola occurs at the minimum value of a function. Here it does. Sometimes occurs at the maximum, right? But we can say sometimes for that, yeah. Sometimes. Then we got two left. I'm going to scooch this up real quick. But really, there's 15 on your actual test. But you're kind of getting to see 10 of them in advance. Five are mysterious. Mysterious. Okay, last ones. Here we go. Last three. Or last two, excuse me. The quadratic function has an axis of symmetry at y equals 7. Hmm. One, two, three. Can you just see that? Four, five, six, seven, axis of symmetry. Well, I just drew one, but are they all going to have an axis of symmetry at y? I mean, excuse me, x equals seven? No, but sometimes it could. And last but not least, the graph of a quadratic function has no zeros. Sometimes, right? This one never crosses that x axis x-axis. You got to be careful when you say that. You can say a naughty word. It never crosses. This one cross bloop bloop once. This one cross bloop bloop two times. So no zeros? That can happen sometimes. We're going to go with sometimes on that one. Cool beans. Okay. We're good. All videos are done. And if you put all the videos together, it's about 10, 20, 30, 40, about 50 minutes. Okay, so 50 minute, you can watch them in little pieces. You don't have to watch all of them together. That's a lot of Mrs. Miller. I don't even know if I want to hear my own squeaky voice that long. But um, please study. You got this. I know you do. You can do it. Okay, blessings. Have a good day. Study hard. Get there and dig hard. Learn this stuff. Um, and I look forward to amazing grades.